Peace everyone, Unmask Art here and welcome back to the Live Pastel tutorial. So yesterday we worked on our deer here and we got pretty far. We got all the base colors done. We got the ears done. We did a little bit of detail on the fur on the head. We finished the eyes. We finished the nose. Uh, so today is going to be all about fine tuning the details on the deer and then also finishing up the neck and shoulders kind of back area here and then adding in the whiskers some of the eyelashes and uh, that's going to be that's going to be it for this tutorial it's uh, it's been a fun process i really like the way that it uh, has started to come out and i hope that you guys have enjoyed it as well so welcome back uh, carmen and jeff uh, glad you guys could be here and let's just go ahead and get right into this. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a blue. I'm going to grab a nice bright blue, uh, 425, and I'm going to I'm going to bring in some blue into the f the face and the fur here. Uh, when I when I look at the image, I see blues and oranges, and I even see a little bit of purple in the fur. So I'm just going to come in here and brush in a little bit of bright blue now when you're doing fur uh, i highly recommend you have some fun with your color choices uh, when anytime i'm doing hair or fur whether it's on a person or an animal i love i love grabbing some unique colors like for instance this really bright blue and finding ways to incorporate it into the fur or the hair, uh, whether that's in the shadows or just in the overall base color of the fur itself. Uh, and in this case, this deer, it has a really, really short fur on its face, so it's almost, it's almost reflective. And because of the blue sky above, a lot of that blue actually ends up reflecting in the fur and showing up. So that's why I am grabbing this blue. And when you're working with pastel pencils or pastels in general, you don't you don't have to go for uh, a safe blue. Like I think that a lot of people would probably reach for this lighter blue, which is uh, 440, as opposed to this much brighter saturated blue. And the reason I'm going for this brighter blue is because I'm using a lot less of it. So when I'm only using a tiny, tiny amount of this blue in my picture, if I want any blue at all to show up, it needs to be really well saturated. So that's why I'm going for this much brighter, more saturated blue as opposed, as opposed to that just lighter, safe sky blue. I feel like the lighter blue would actually lighten up the fur uh, and that's not exactly what I'm looking to do. I just want to uh, incorporate some blue into the fur. Oh, hello, Lynn and Garbor, uh, Saul, uh, sure. Hopefully, I pronounced that correctly. Tracy, glad to glad to see you all here. Now, when it comes to these final details on the face, the, it's the face is pretty much done. Uh, hopefully you see that um, and really at this stage on the face in particular it's it's all about just fine-tuning the form that you put down so we have our lighting you can you can see when I move this out of the way uh, you can see that the light source is heavily favoring the right side and slightly the top so it's like top right this is where the Sun would be shining on our deer here and uh, so we've established our lighting with the base colors that we applied yesterday with the soft pastels not the pencils and now we're just using the pencils to add in the texture of the fur add in the subtle colors in the fur and all that uh, so that is that is the plan for today uh, there's not a whole lot left really that i can even do to the face so uh, instead of just 
playing around with those and kind of nitpicking those details, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move on to the body here. And the first color that I'm kind of compelled to reach for is a dark gray 708. And I'm just gonna start putting in some of the longer pencil strokes creating the texture of fur. And I'm not gonna do this too heavily. I want them to be rather loose and leave plenty of room for the addition of other colors. The importance here is mapping out the direction that the fur is going and the length that the fur is. So don't be too, um, too hastily with this initial uh, fur texture creation. You want to take your time with this and just make sure that you uh, map out the flow of the fur. Getting, getting that direction of the fur is very, very important to, to completing this piece and making the animal look natural. So there's a lot of curvature happening in the fur as it comes down off the neck and starts to rotate this way. So I'm kind of using this pencil to map out generally where those curves begin and then slowly filling in all the gaps in between. So just uh, really, really lightly creating the fur texture. I'm going to incorporate more colors just like I did with the face. Uh, I think I'm going to add some purple a little bit, uh, maybe, maybe a touch of blue in a few spots, but then of course I'm going to grab some of the oranges and really bring out the color of the fur. Because right now the fur is, is a little toned down and a bit desaturated, it's a bit too gray. So I'll use my, my toning colors to bring out a more natural bright color of the fur and give it, give it a little bit more life. I'm not, I'm not too worried about uh, contrast or anything, it's all about the direction that I'm doing right now. Uh, the base colors established the light source. So that's what's really important about the base colors. Now it's just about creating the texture. And for this fur, the direction that the fur is going is the most important aspect in creating the effect. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed the process of this tutorial. I hope you guys have learned a lot throughout this kind of series of, of live streams, particularly uh, about, uh, you know, the blurry background, kind of just out of focus background, uh, using what we used some of the uh, masking film uh, technique on the deer, and then of course, building up layers of color and creating texture now, uh, just fine-tuning the details. So I hope that it's been beneficial to those of you that have watched the live streams. And I greatly appreciate everybody that has come to the live streams and supported me and just hung out, asked questions and things like that. I hope, uh, I hope to do many more of these in the future. So if you're new to my channel, make sure you don't forget to subscribe. So the direction, the direction here on the back is very, very important. And it starts like this, and then it curls up. Um, and then it starts to rotate back. So that's kind of the direction that the fur is going. So I'm just kind of adding a few loose lines to establish that very important fur direction and it all kind of fans out. Uh, it, it all kinds of fans out like this. That's what the fur does. So the curve slowly starts to grow and begins to curl up. And it's all coming from like the chin, like that's where the flow is coming from. adding these lines that I was actually going to do quite a bit to the 
to the fur, give it a lot of texture here. It's almost going to look complete after adding these direction lines. Don't go too long with your lines though. Make sure you maintain uh, a good length that matches the length of the fur because the fur on the face is very, very short and then the fur on the body is quite long. I would say that um, it's probably about four or five centimeters in length in real life. If I was to guess based on the uh, reference photo that I have here, Once you have the direction mapped out and you have a bit more confidence, you can go in and start adding a few darker lines and creating a bit more uh, contrast, just uh, enhancing that shadow in that area. Deer is looking really nice. Thank you, Lady Marigold. Hello, Blossom. Good to see you again. Tracy, I think I said hello. Uh, hello, Shiny. Hello, hello, shiny. <laughs> um, uh, oh, and uh, Fine Art Anna, good to see you as well. And Juan, I'm glad you're back, Juan. So I'm just uh, enhancing some of the subtle changes in light that is happening in the shadow here just darkening up a few spots and it's a much much easier once you have that fur direction mapped out you you can kind of freely add in some of the texture of the fur without thinking too much without having to think too much Do the same thing on the neck now, just to add in a few darker areas where the, the shadows are a bit darker, the fur changes, before incorporating some of my brighter colors to bring the fur to life just a bit more. Using the, the gray to establish your shadows is, is very, uh, very convenient and easy, especially if you select really nice colors for your base layers. Thank you, Anna. I'm glad you like the way the deer is coming along. Yes, it, it um, unfortunately, I, I, I went back and looked at yesterday's stream, um, and so I have, I have quite a bit of light on my table here, as many of you know, and it actually, it, it makes it makes this painting not look as good as it does in person. Uh, so once I finish it, I did post a work in progress picture over on Facebook a few moments ago, but once I finish this, uh, I'll take a really nice picture of it so you guys can see uh, a little bit more accurately what this picture actually looks like because um, I feel like it the, the lighting in the camera really, um, it, it, it kind of um, overdoes it with the light a bit, making it look not as contrasted as it is in person. Uh, so um, be sure to uh, follow me on Facebook and Instagram so you can see the, the final product of this. Okay, let's grab a bit of orange now, and I think I'm gonna go rather bright. Let me just uh, sharpen it so I get nice clean lines. Oh, hello, Steve and Lee Art. And Blessed from California, uh, Arvis Blessed. I think that's how you say it, but uh, glad, glad to see you in the live stream. And Sean. Uh, w will I be going back to the pair next stream? So, Jamie, this, is, uh, this stream here is just for... YouTube in general. This is public for everybody. Uh, the pair still life is a Patreon only project. 
Um, for those of you that are curious as to what uh, Jamie is referring to, uh, she is referring to this project here that I am doing in colored pencil over on Patreon. Um, and yes, Jamie, we, those of us on Patreon, uh, will be continuing that still life piece tomorrow. Actually, I need to schedule out the live stream after I finish today's stream, but, uh, one, one, one stream at a time is all I can, uh, can do at this current time. Um, but yeah, we're going to continue that and finish the second pair tomorrow. And then, uh, on Friday for Patreon, we will, um, we'll do the plate in that still life. So, uh, so this color here that I'm adding is 680 and it's, it's a rather, it's a rather bright, uh, orange kind of a clay, clay color. Uh, and I think it works really nicely with bringing out the orange uh, in the fur. It's not, it's not too orange, but um, it's it's a really good color. This will help bring the fur to life a little bit. Again, same rules apply when you're adding these these colors to brighten up the fur. You have to uh, make sure that your pencil stroke is in the correct direction. However, since we have the fur, the flow of the fur going uh, mapped out, it, it's very um, it's very easy to just continue continue without thinking much of the direction that you have to go. So the next important thing is the length of your pencil strokes. Uh, don't make them too short, but also don't make them too short, uh, too long. So you have to find the middle ground there that matches the length of your fur. Going too long will make the fur look very, very uh, over, overly long. So uh, you just have to match what it is lengthwise in actuality. And if you go too short, if you go too short, what will happen is that it will start looking kind of choppy. Um, and another thing that's very, very important is that you don't break the flow of the fur. It's it, even if you have to initially, when you're mapping out the directionality of the fur, even if you have to draw a subtle solid line in certain places to, to make sure that you have that flow correct, what, uh, what I see a lot of people struggling with when they're doing fur, and this doesn't this doesn't um, particularly pertain to just pastels. It, it's colored pencils, it's acrylic paints, oil paints. Does not matter the medium you're working with. Um, what they'll do is they'll start the flow correctly with their single color or whatever color it doesn't matter. They'll start the flow of the fur correctly, and then they'll come down a little ways and try to continue matching that flow but if you if you have that gap in the middle with your fur or with your hair or whatever regardless of the medium and you happen to uh, mess up the the smooth curvature of that flow of the fur uh, your fur is going to look very very jagged very very uneven and it's going to create weird anatomy anomalies in whatever you're working with, whether it makes a, a person's head look like it has a bulb underneath of it, or it makes it look like somebody went up and rubbed their head with their hand. Um, so it's very important that you keep that flow throughout very consistent, um, unless for some reason it changes because of, you know, the, like the fold here, uh, in, in the deer's skin, bunching up the fur or something along those lines. Though even right here in the fold, uh, it stays very consistent. So uh, that is probably the uh, one tip that I can stress when it comes to doing fur or hair, uh, regardless of the medium, that people just constantly mess up. Uh, there's there's always there's probably as many tutorials on YouTube uh, 
uh, about how to color or draw hair or paint hair as there are about doing eyes because everybody loves doing eyes uh, but I don't think I've ever come across a single one that uh, really boils down to uh, what is what requires uh, what is required for good hair or fur and that is the flow um, people mention the direction the pencil stroke direction brush brush stroke direction but the underlying uh, factor in all of that is is mapping out the flow of the fur um, if if you follow me on patreon and you've seen some of my uh, tutorials on hair or or furry creatures or of whatever uh, kind um, then you know that I stress the flow of, of hair um, in all of those tutorials I always bring it up because it is it is just vital uh, to getting the fur or the hair looking natural and uh, you liking it in the end so that is that is why I'm I'm probably over stressing it uh, but hopefully uh, it sinks in after you you heard me uh, stress it enough because it is the number one factor for creating good fur and hair I would say there is nothing more important than that color color is completely irrelevant if you can pick up whatever random pack of, of colors uh, blindfolded from your tray of pencils and create nice fur or hair if you just follow the pattern of and the flow of the hair um, let's see oh hello Donnie um, animals with white fur are my favorite uh, yeah I, I like I like white fur for animals as well uh, I'm trying to think of I did uh, I did a puppy like quite some time ago um, but I'm trying to think if I, if I've really done that many I haven't uh, that I can remember I should do I should do a, f a white furred creature like a white tiger or something that would be fun um, maybe it doesn't apply so much to the Deer picture, but have I ever used gouache under painting? Uh, no, I've actually I've never used gouache in all of my life. So, um, yeah, I can. That's that's an easy answer, <laughs> uh, easy question to answer. Um, it's beautiful. Downloaded your color pencil tutorial yesterday. We'll start it later. Can't wait. Well, thank you very much, um, Miriam. Uh, hopefully, I pronounce that somewhat correctly but uh, thank you very much for downloading my course I hope that you have a lot of fun and if uh, uh, when you when you complete your projects uh, feel free to to send me what you complete I'd love to see it I had a, a few people purchase my uh, intro to colored pencil course yesterday so I always look forward to the people that uh, finish the course and send me an email saying that they enjoyed it or or they send me pictures of their finished uh, finished products and whatnot it's always a pleasure to see and I'm glad that so many people are learning so much from it um, I uh, put a lot into that course and thinking of what was was really essential to learning the medium and I think that uh, I covered uh, quite a bit of information throughout that that course that gets a lot of people uh, on the right track for progressing with colored pencils quickly and of course uh, working with pastels now we can't forget about my pastel course uh, that one also is a, a favorite of many people all right so uh, I think I'm good with this color. I'm going to start incorporating some other colors. And I see uh, 
I see a bit of clay rose, uh, and this this color was used quite a bit in the ears. And I don't know why I see this color, but I see it. And uh, so I'm going to add this color, and this is 642 with the uh, Carbothello pencils. Um, and also, I I, I, mentioned, I haven't mentioned yet, but uh, the description, the, the video description has all of the supplies that I've used on this project. And then also it has a link to the reference photo so um, and the line art. So you have the reference photo and line art available. Um, for those of you that uh, might have missed the previous streams and just uh, came to this one, uh, if you're looking for the reference photo, it is in the video description. So feel free to download that and use it as you wish, even if you don't uh, do it in pastels. Maybe uh, you'll just paint it or perhaps uh, use colored pencils. Uh, the reason I like this clay rose color, besides the fact that I feel like I'm seeing it in the reference photo, uh, is that it really warms up. It really warms up the shadow uh, on the neck here, and it just, it, I just feel like it adds a nice depth to the color. Uh, if you, if you're doing fur, uh, doing a creature of any kind with fur and you're not really satisfied with the depth that uh, is being created in your image, you know, try to play around with your color choices. You know, sometimes, sometimes it just takes what appears to be seemingly a random color uh, to just really bring out everything that you want to see in your image. So just, you know, have fun with it and try Try different colors. Um, I'm probably going to grab a purple real soon, a uh, nice grape purple, just super purple, and uh, play around with that. I I want to I want to see what purple does to my fur here. I'll probably grab a bit of yellow as well and touch up some of the highlights and bring in the color of the sun. And I think that will uh, really work with the purple since uh, yellow is the complement of purple. And so I'm just going to. I'm just going to play around with those colors a bit and see what happens to my fur here and see what uh, what cool effect I, I can get by incorporating a bit of the, the complementary colors into the fur, uh, kind of sitting right next to each other. Uh, let's see, uh, did I miss a question? Um, you may have increased share prices for Helix sharpeners in the past 24 hours. <laughs> well, I've actually I've been um, I've been sharing the Helix uh, pencil sharpener for a while. I feel like I need to call them up and get them to sponsor me or something. Um, but uh, yeah, it it has worked really really well up until like the, this past month or whatever. But uh, yesterday yesterday I had a good day. I, I guess I just had to wait for it to um, feel better after all the abuse I've been giving it with my uh, pastel pencils because pastel pencils they they will dull just about any eraser or any sharpener uh, rather quickly because they are tough little things to uh, to sharpen they're not as they're not as gentle on a sharpener blade as graphite is in fact graphite is actually rather friendly it's the it's the really hard wood that um, makes the, the pencil sharpener blades kind of die out real quickly. But uh, the, the graphite themselves, the graphite itself actually kind of helps sharpen it. But uh, you don't get that with the pastel pencils. They're, they're, they're tough and uh, they'll do a number on just about any pencil sharpener. All right, I am satisfied with some of that. Uh, I'm going to go with some purple now, and I'm going to grab really dark purple. This is super obvious purple. This is 385, and I'm going to start by incorporating it into the face first, uh, so I get a little bit of purple up here, uh, and I'm just going to uh, kind of throw it in seemingly random. 
um, I'm sticking around some of the darker areas of the face just in adding some details and this is going to be subtle okay so if you if uh, I say that I've added enough and you're sitting there watching this and you're like uh, I don't see any purple at all uh, the odds are I added just the right amount of purple you shouldn't really see you you really shouldn't see the purple it should be so subtle that uh, you you actually have to look closely in person just to see it um, so I'm just going to add it to some of the shadows in the face here here and there and just bring out some of the contrast that the the color gives me kind of shape the anatomy of the face a little bit with it but it goes really nicely against the orange uh, fur in the shadows I just I really like the interaction between these two colors and even though the reference photo doesn't quite have this interaction um, this is the uh, the benefit of being an artist as opposed to being a photographer uh, is I can I mean if you edit the photo you can add purple this way but uh, it's never going to be a drawing or in our case a pastel painting so this is this is what I like about being in control of the image from the beginning to the end as I can play around with the colors as much as I want like I said you might not be able to see too much of this purple but uh, it, it is slowly it is slowly building up and showing out, showing uh, more and more uh, against this uh, this orange furred deer here. Let's see, I'm gonna add a little bit to the nose as well. This will help create uh, a bit of depth rather than just having a flat black nose. So just uh, throw in a touch of purple there, maybe a little bit here on this nostril. There we go. I think that uh, I think that adds a really nice completion to the the nose here. If I did the, if I did the face all in uh, grays and blacks and stuff, it'd look really dull. But incorporating yesterday we incorporated uh, quite a bit of blue, uh, and then adding a bit of orange to. The, the face and uh, now adding some purple I think it gives the the face a really nice completion or close to it anyways now I'm going to come back down here to the the neck and body and add a bit of this purple in here get a little bit of play on the complementary colors once I uh, once I grab some yellow and hit up the highlights a little bit. Got a, a cute picture of a llama. Any tips on doing that short, curly, multi-layered type of fur that looks almost like every single hair goes a different direction? So when it comes to the uh, really like really unique texture of that kind of hair uh, there's there's not a lot of shortcuts that you can take uh, when creating that texture you're you're going to have to draw the curves of, of that hair happening but what you can do is use your base layers uh, I'm assuming you're using pastels in this case um, if not um, it, I guess it doesn't make the, a huge difference. I, I probably would never touch that kind of hair with a 10-foot pole when it comes to colored pencils, but with pastels or, or acrylic paint or oil paint, I would I would probably uh, do that hair, but um, that, that hair feels like it would be a nightmare with colored pencils, but with pastel pencils um, or pastels in general, 
just use your base layers to your advantage. Um, you can you can start to build up that texture. Um, I'm trying to picture the hair in my head, but um, I imagine that if you were to blur the image, you'd probably get kind of a spotty look with the hair, and then the curls kind of sit on top of those spots. So you might try something like that. Um, build up uh, some of the basic texture of the fur, and then uh, use your lighter pencils to create the loops of hair over top of your darker shades. So that's the way that I would approach it. Um, light over dark, and then use your light pencils to create those curls. Let's throw in a bit of purple over in these shadows now. I really, really like the way that purple is showing up though. Actually, I want, I want some more underneath of its chin here. There we go. Yeah, I, I don't know how well you guys can see this purple, but I can assure you that it looks fantastic. Let me just assure you of that. It's, it's very subtle, but uh, you can, you can see the purple, and it adds a really nice depth to the color of the fur. And how many of you would have grabbed this bright of a purple? Like, this is, this is one of those colors that I was referring to where, you know, go out of your comfort zone a little bit, grab a color you, you don't think is going that you don't think makes sense, you know, like with the blue, I, I went for the brighter blue as opposed to just the more neutral sky blue, um, simply because I'm using less of the color in order to get the color to really show up at all. You have to use an exaggeration of the color, um, and this is true with, with colored pencils most of the time as well, is if you're only adding a little bit of any particular color, sometimes you have to grab a pencil that uh, far exceeds what you want the color to actually show up as, simply to have it show up at all. Um, let's see. Uh, is the deer reference photo royalty free? Can we use it any way we want? Yes, this deer photo is royalty free. Um, did I miss a question? Oh, I think uh, I think you might be referring to the uh, curly fur with colored pencils. I don't don't quite see the purple, but the effect looks fantastic. Well, that's all that matters. Purple, yellow, brown tones work perfectly together. Yeah, yeah, they do. Purple. Purple is kind of uh, like, purple is like, if, if there was any color that I would consider to be a ninja, it is purple. Because that color can sneak its way into just about anything. Like purple is a magic color. I think that's probably why uh, historically it's been, it's been a royalty, a color of royalty simply because it, it it just shows up wherever it wants and does whatever it wants. It's a fantastic color. All right, I'm going to bring in some yellow now, some really light yellow. And this is 692. Uh, did I mention that color of purple? Yeah, that, that dark purple is 385, by the way, just in case I forgot. Um, another artist I follow always says not to introduce new colors if you haven't used it in the rest of the picture. Um, okay, that, that's one way of saying it. I feel like that's a really negative way of saying it, Jamie. But uh, I think a better way of describing what that artist is referring to is whenever you use a color, try to find other ways to... Uh, incorporate it into the piece. So uh, if I'm going to use purple in the face, I should use it here. 
I already used purple in the background. How many of you remember that? I did that last week. Um, I used all kinds of colors in the background. Blue, purple, yellow, green, um, and a bunch of grays and stuff, right? So the important thing to remember is, uh, you know, try not to localize any particular color because it usually looks a little awkward. So if I were to never use purple, but I only used it in like this one portion of my deer, then it probably would look a little weird um, and a little off. So, um, so instead of saying, don't introduce new colors that haven't been used in the rest of the picture, um, I feel like that, for me, that feels restrictive. Um, I would say it as if you're going to, or I would say use your new color wherever you can put it. Uh, that way it balances out the overall image. All right, let's add some yellow here and get some highlights into the fur. Well, just a little bit. I'm going to use white as well to incorporate some, uh, to create some highlights. But we're actually we're actually almost done with this deer. There's not a whole lot more that I can actually do to it. Um, hopefully, you guys are satisfied with the way that it looks. <laughs> um, really needs to be a ninja purple. Yeah, that if if there was any purple that is a ninja, I would say that uh, clay rose is probably like they should just take the name Clay Rose because that one, it, it sounds boring, and rename it to Ninja Purple. Because Clay Rose is, yeah, that's like purple meets uh, gray, and it's pure magic. That, I, I swear I use that color in everything I ever draw in my life. Um, it's always there. It's always there. Clay Rose. Um, a very similar color. I don't know if the name is clay rose, but the luminance, uh, the luminance color eight six two. That that color there is uh, like just the right amount of purple and gray. All right, let's create a bit of highlights on this side of the neck. A little bit of reflective light coming from the grass, maybe. Who knows? Coming from something. There we go. I'm not going to overdo it. Can't overdo it. Um, and let's let's go up to the face and um, get this highlight on the side of the face. This this rim light with this yellow. That might be too yellow. Might have to use a bit of gray to dull that down a bit, but create a few strands of hair here. Balance out that shadow there so it doesn't look so flat. There we go. See, the, the, the conversation about introducing um, new colors, so I've, I've never used this yellow before. So you can see that, um, you know, I didn't just leave it down here in the highlights. Now I'm going up to the face and finding ways to uh, just touch up the face and add a little bit of, of uh, interest, a little bit more interest in the color of the fur in the face. So it, it's all about, it's a balancing act. Um, being an artist is really close to being an acrobat. You know, you're, we're always balancing um, something. And in our case, it's not uh, a spinning plate on the end of a stick. It's, it's colors and contrast and tone and temperature and texture. We're, that's, that's what it's all about. It, it's just balancing uh, all of those aspects that make a good image regardless of what that image is of it's just 
finding uh, finding a unique way to balance the color contrast values and everything Let's go to another color, and I think I'm going to go a bit darker with some of my shadows here. And I'm going to use, what is this color? This is 760. This is that really dark, um, uh, really dark gray. Yeah, it's really dark gray. I think that's all it is. It's hard to see under this light. <laughs> And I'm just gonna I'm gonna use this to add just a bit more depth to my fur in the shadows. Go a bit darker, especially underneath the chin here. And anywhere I see that there's not enough texture, I'm gonna kind of use this color to to break up that that plainness of the fur so increasing the uh, amount of texture here and you can do this you can you can do this for hours you know there's uh, you always you always hear somebody you you know talking about like overworking an image or something like that I, I feel like you can't reach that with pastels because there's just there's just so much freedom uh, with with the pastels that Overworking almost doesn't exist. There is a point though that you can get and not be able to add really anything. But uh, gosh, it, you gotta be pretty heavy handed to get to that point. So as long as you're, you're rather gentle with your piece, you can just keep adding and adding and adding and adding and kind of rebalancing all your texture, all your detail, all your colors. Slowly transforming a piece of paper into a living creature. Uh, okay, Jamie, well, you have a good night. Um, the, the pair will be uh, uh, the same time tomorrow, yes. Well, thank you, Shiny. I'm glad that uh, I'm glad you like my animals. <laughs> I actually don't do very many animals. Um, I I don't I, I, I like to do everything, but I, I, I feel like I don't do very many animals. I should do them more often. I think people I think people enjoy them. All right, now what I'm going to do, I'm gonna take my blending sponge here, <coughs> and I'm going to soften my texture a little bit, very, very gently, like barely touching it. And uh, the reason I'm doing this is to kind of get rid of any sense that this fur was put together by a pencil. Uh, because there's still a little bit of kind of graininess to each pencil stroke. And by doing this really, really lightly with my sponge brush, I am like, I, I am touching this so gently. Um, I cannot stress that enough. I'm, I just want to get rid of the grainy pencil look uh, to soften the, the fur. And it does not take a lot does not take any pressure at all. You don't want to move 
you don't want to move your color or move your detail. You just want to kind of get rid of the dust almost. And this will help the, uh, the deer's fur look very, very soft and touchable. It's very easy to overdo this, so don't do it too much. Oh, thank you so much, Lynn. Loving the texture I'm getting on the neck. Yes, yes, it's um, really starting to come out with uh, those uh, simple, simple little techniques of just, you know, mapping out the flow uh, of the of the fur and the light. Uh, the, the light source was really, really established uh, with my base colors that it actually didn't take a whole lot of effort with the pencils to get it complete or to a stage of completion. I'm going to grab um, a medium gray now. And I don't know if this is going to be the right color, but I'm going to try it out. Uh, I need to create a little bit of a rim light on this side of the deer and uh, I don't want to use something too bright something right in the middle and I think this yeah I think this is a good color and I want to break up that really clean edge that I created because obviously that's not what deers look like they have fur sticking out and loose hairs and things like that so that's what I'm creating a bit of that texture there breaking up that clean line. Now with the ears, it's fine because the ears, uh, with the exception of a little bit of fuzziness in some spots, uh, they're rather smooth. So I just want to do this here on the neck a little bit. Not too much, but uh, enough to make it look like the fur is sticking out. Breaking up that clean edge is really going to um, help this deer sit in the image a lot better as well. So just doing a little bit on the face here. There we go. I think that's good. Maybe, maybe even a bit more on the bottom right there. Yeah, I think that works. And I'm going to do a little bit right here on this edge. Just kind of uh, feather it kind of soften that edge because it's actually out of focus. So this part back here is actually out of focus. And I'm gonna do kind of a blurry line, a blurry edge here. And then here as well, all the way, all the way around. I wanna get rid of that sharp, clean edge because it doesn't look natural. So I'm kind of just using this color to blur that edge. And I'm going to grab a bit of white wherever that's at. Come back to that edge again. Continue blurring it. And then I'm going to add a bit of shine to the highlight. Uh, let's see, maybe add a few highlights here as well. Coming across, breaking up that edge of, uh, in the uh, fur here so that it doesn't look so flat. A few highlights coming across the shadow, some stray hairs, all that, all that. That helps, uh, that helps uh, kind of transition between the highlight and the shadow without making it look too blocky and weird. All right, 
there's not a whole lot left that I can think of. Uh, this chin here is nice and bright on this edge, so I'm gonna add in that highlight there. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna take a moment to uh, to look at this for a second. Um, let's see. I feel like I can bring out a few few highlights or like chin hairs or, or something. I don't know what they are, but they are a bit brighter right here and kind of uh, highlight this just a bit right across there. And a bit on the face, I think. Uh, a little bit of a highlight kind of right there. Add a bit more texture. Come across the top of the head with a highlight. Break that up a bit. Break this center here as well. Give that gray a bit of a highlight there. And come across some of these colors just a little bit. Create some more texture. Lighten up this area overall just a tiny bit. And maybe right here on the bridge of the nose kind of thing, or whatever you call it. Let's see, anything else? Maybe touch up this highlight around the eye. Hmm. Add a little speck of light in the eye. I like that. Kind of gives the the eye that last little boost of brightness. Let's see. Because I have, the last thing that I'm going to do is add like the last bit of flyaways and things to really bring the uh, f the image home. Uh, but you don't ever want to do that before you're done with your your full color. Um, one thing I'm thinking, uh, some of these shadows need to be a bit darker on the face. So I think I'm going to do that first. Uh, and I'm just going to do that in black, I think. Uh, going over the rim light made all the difference in the world. was wondering if there was going, if I was going to do that. And yep, you did. Another reason I call you Obi-Wan. <laughs> yes, I can, I can assure you I, I didn't miss that. Um, yeah, the, the clean edge looks good for a little while, but when you really want to polish out the final image, you, you got to take care of those edges. Like I said, the ears are good because they're mostly hairless, but uh, the rest of the body and stuff, yeah, got to take care of that stuff. Very, very important. All right, let me uh, get in here with the black uh, just to darken up a bit of the shadows around the, this side of the face here. That way, uh, it just looks. Uh, it has that. It has that contrast that needs to appear. And this is actually rather difficult because what I don't want to do is uh, make it look real bony uh, by accentuating these shadows. I also have to kind of tone down where it's lighter. So I'll probably have to grab another uh, gray and do another layer of, or whatnot uh, of some colors to get that to look totally correct. But I need to add just a bit more to this side of the face here before I feel satisfied. Now I guess I'm not really working in any of the areas that uh, I couldn't work around if I were to put in the flyaways and whatnot, but uh, I'd rather not rush rush the process because, uh, as I mentioned before, at this stage of the drawing, some people could call it done. Some people could call it done, but this is the part that I like the most, uh, and that is... Um, 
uh, sorry, I was reading, I, I got distracted, I was reading the chat. Um, this is the part that I like the most because um, it's, it's all about the subtlety of just kind of doing what I'm doing now, adding a little bit of contrast to some of the shadows and whatnot. Uh, so uh, it, it's, it looks good, but if you kind of just finesse it uh, a bit more with your colors, kind of maximize your, your contrast and colors and, and whatnot, and uh, kind of play around with it, uh, you can make it something that you really, really like. And uh, I, could, I could sit here all day and just kind of, you know, mold my image uh, whichever, whichever direction I feel like it needs to be taken uh, just to get the, the final look that I, that I really want to see. Uh, I'm obviously not going to do that. I'm going to call it a, a day very shortly, but... Uh, for those of you that perhaps try this this uh, pastel piece yourself, you know, don't uh, don't cut yourself short. If you are enjoying the uh, finesse stage, then by all means continue it till you are fully satisfied. And you know, take take a break as well. Don't uh, try to do it all at once. Step away from it. Have a have a have a look at it from a distance. Let your eyes rest. And uh, take a day to see if you still like it after after a day. Uh, because I uh, th this this piece here was actually a bit different than. It was actually the, the reverse. I kind of didn't like it. Um, I kind of, I kind of didn't like it. And then, uh, as I once I turned off all these lights, and I got to see it in a more natural setting, I was like, okay, okay, it does look pretty good. Because sometimes, sometimes you guys comments on the live stream. Um, I read the comment. And then I look at it, and I'm like, are we seeing the same thing? Am I streaming what I'm doing right now? Because uh, sometimes I feel like uh, you guys are praising me a bit too early before anything looks like anything. <laughs> but I appreciate it. Uh, hopefully you're not just doing it out of the kindness of your heart, and you actually think what you're saying. Um, but, uh, yeah. Uh, this, this piece has grown on me a little bit. And I like it more and more, uh, especially when I turn these super bright lights off and I can see it without feeling like I'm looking at it underneath a microscope, because that's what I kind of feel like sometimes. Uh, when I'm when I'm sitting here drawing, I have these really bright lights, so I literally see every aspect of my drawing, uh, and then I kind of end up not liking it, and then. I turn the lights off and I see it normally and I'm like, oh, okay, okay, I guess I didn't do too bad. Uh, I guess I, I, what I, ends up happening is I overcompensate. I'm like, oh, I don't like it and I can, I try to fix it under this scrutiny of lights and then, um, because I was trying to make it look good underneath the lights, it looks really good out from under them. All right, let's see, is there, is there any other... Um, I feel like this shadow, I, I don't know, I, I think, I vote for more purple, that's what I vote for, but I'm gonna go with a darker purple, um, not so bright, this is just a, this is just a really dark purple. I gotta sharpen it though, I want some more, I want some more purple in this. Let's get let's get in here with some more purple. I am uh, not done with the purple just yet. I just want to increase the contrast in these shadows a bit more to really 
get the most out of my light. That's what I want. And I think purple is the exact color that it's going to take to do that. better. There we go. Might have to uh, use this color a bit in the face as well. <clears throat> Actually, now that now that I'm looking at it, um, this this area here on both the ears looks a little dull to me. So I'm gonna go up there uh, and, and use a bit of this purple to uh, to balance out the the color in the ears a bit more because they're just looking a little eh, underdeveloped so I'm gonna do that last bit of touch up and then I'm going to sharpen my white pencil and do the uh, the whiskers and flyaways uh, if and I say if you were to tone down the brighter parts, how would you do that? Uh, I mean, what colors would you use to tone the bright areas down? So if I were to like, if I were to soften the highlights a little bit, uh, I would start with like a neutral warm gray, something like um, uh, perhaps, perhaps something like this. Uh, this is 704 or if I didn't want to go that soft, because that's rather dark actually, um, 720. Uh, you could go a bit more yellow with the 700, so something like that. Um, that's what I would use. But uh, the the benefit that you have with pastels is that you can really you know brighten up uh, a lot of things. So if you were to go with a slightly darker gray, you could always go um, a bit brighter after after the fact by using white or something like that. Okay, last bit of purple, and I'm going to uh, soften the fur a bit more back here in the back because um, since it's a little out of focus, I actually want to draw more attention to the face. So I want to lose a little bit of the texture in the back here. So I'm just going to gently soften that texture and let it fade away into the background a bit more. Just going to get rid of any of the uh, identifying pencil strokes and just soften it a tiny tiny bit and slowly let the texture build up as you get closer to the face there we go i think that balances it out nicely now i'm going to jump up to these ears really quick because i'm not quite satisfied with them and i'm going to use that dark purple there to bring in a bit of color here to these uh, shapes, these dark shadowed shapes, just to refine the, uh, the ears a bit. I'm gonna grab a bit brighter purple, just add a little bit of purple in there. There, that, uh, yeah, that, that already looks better. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Kind of refine this shape here a bit like this. And then once again, add some of that bright purple. Okay. 
That bright purple again is 385. And let's see. I'm going to come into this part of the ear as well and add some of that bright purple. Not a whole lot. I think that balances out the, the, the color in the ears quite nicely. Okay, let me sharpen up my white pencil preemptively because I'm gonna, I'm gonna have one, one last look before going, going all in with this white. here. Yeah, you might be right, Shiny. Um, what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to take a bit of gray and I'm just going to kind of go around the edge there and soften that, soften that edge there around the, the edge of the ear. There. Now it's not so bold. And I'll do the same thing over on this side. There. That, I think that, yeah, I think that works. Now it's not as bold, so. All right, now for the white. Um, I'm gonna come across this eye first. Very quick. You got to be quick with the uh, with the lashes. No hesitation allowed. Uh, cannot hesitate. And as you drag the pencil, you have to simultaneously lift it. Uh, otherwise, it's not going to be clean. Uh, a clean line. Okay, so there's this one hair. There's this one hair like dangling here. I'm not adding that, I don't like it. Um, now I'm gonna add a few stray hairs coming off the forehead. Uh, kind of like this. Uh, I don't know what those hairs are, but I'm gonna add them, here we go. There's one like here, coming off the face like this. Um, and the beard, these hairs are kind of just going all over the place. Whiskers and everything coming off. whiskers coming off this part oh no that was no good pushed a little bit too hard broke the tip of the pencil off but I think that's pretty close Yeah, I think that's good. I don't know how well you can see those fine lines that I added there. But they are there. Uh, let's see, anywhere else? Uh, add some fuzziness to the ears a little bit.
think that I think that's uh, about uh, about it. Don't think there's much much else I can do to that deer. Fine lines showing up. Great, awesome, awesome. So, you guys know what time it is now. It's time for untaping. Everybody's favorite moment. So let's go ahead and do this. Everybody's favorite moment. This is what completes. This is, this is how you officially complete a pastel painting by untaping it. Some, some say it's signing your name, but no, it is untaping. Everybody. There is the finished product. Let's zoom in here a little bit. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed this uh, this pastel painting. I'll uh, post a picture over on Instagram and Facebook so you can appreciate it uh, a little bit more uh, closely with uh, better lighting. And um, yes, thank you all so much for uh, what do I use to sign my pastel paintings? I use my stamp. Um, so that, that stamp that you see on all of my artwork, uh, I have real stamps. So it's, yeah, the real stamps. And I just use uh, ink, just use ink right over top. Uh, anyways, like I was saying, thank you all so much for following the live streams and hanging out. I uh, had a blast. And uh, one other thing that I want to mention is that I am really, really close to 30,000 subscribers. And I don't know how many of you remember me mentioning it, but when I reach 30,000 subscribers, I'm going to be doing a giveaway, and that giveaway is going to be a uh, Huon drawing monitor. So uh, uh, make sure you uh, share my videos and give them a thumbs up uh, so that I can reach 30,000 subscribers, and one of you lucky subscribers uh, are going to win that Huon drawing monitor. And uh, now that I think about it, I may even be giving away a few original pieces of artwork to a few lucky people as well. So um, aside from that, I uh, hope you guys had fun. I did. And for those of you that support me over on Patreon, I will see you tomorrow when we uh, work on the colored pencil still life. And for everybody else, uh, what are you waiting for? I'll see you next time. Take care. Peace.